Welcome back. Okay, so we have talked a lot about linear system identification using the Eigen system realization algorithm and the uh, observer Kalman filter identification. So here we're going to do some quick MATLAB demos just to show how this works on toy systems. Remember in test sys, this is just a discrete random state space system with 100 states, um, kind of 100 hidden variables, dynamic variables in the ODE, two inputs and two outputs. Okay, so I'm going to load this. Uh, let's run this. Good. Uh, I'm going to act like all I have is data. Okay, I don't have access to the model A, B, C, D. I just have data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this impulse of the full system. I'm going to collect that data in Y full. That's the only data that I have access to with ERA. All I have is measurements of Y full. And then I'm rerunning impulse without the output just so it plots it to the screen and you can see it. Uh, and then there's some funky stuff here I'm doing. I'm permuting this output because this output is not the same shape I want it for my code. Um, so I'm putting it into the right matrix format. And just uh, so that you know, there's this ERA.M code that you'll have access to. So this is a code that I wrote you know, a long time ago based on ERA that computes basically the reduced A, B, C, and D matrices from your data Y at rank R. You can read through this. I also have an OKID code that I wrote, um, I guess, a while ago, given measurements of U and, and Y and some target rank R. It'll build that impulse response and put it into this matrix H that you can then use for ERA. Okay, So you have access to these codes. Um, but remember, we have a system. We're going to collect data from that system. That's what we're going to do here. And in this case, this is what the data looks like. Okay, So I have two inputs and two outputs. And if I give an impulse in input one, I get this output and this output. And if I have an impulse in input two, these are the two output responses. So again, if I have a two input, two output system, I get an array of impulse responses. I get two by two uh, impulse responses. And this is literally the data that I collect. I have an experiment. I whack my actuator with a hammer. I, like, I crank up the control knob and I can crank it back down. And this is what I measure. This is all of my data for ERA. OK? OK, so computing ERA from the impulse response is pretty simple. I had to reshape my data into a particular format. I, I basically reshaped it so that, um, I guess I'll have to write this up. If I had, um, reshaping your data is pretty, pretty interesting, actually. How do, how do I want to say this? Um, Let's say I have um, Q inputs and P outputs. And just, um, I guess we can assume it's two and two in this case. So what I would end up doing is I get one impulse response for each of these inputs, and each of those impulse responses has P measurements. So in our case, remember, we had these kind of, uh, you know, in one, in two, out one, out two. And I had these various you know, impulse responses. Just going to do my best to draw something stable. OK, what I would have to do, what this reshaping is doing, is at time step one, I take that measurement and I reshape that into a little two by two matrix. I call that kind of my first block. Then at time step two, I take all four of those measurements and I reshape them into a block. At time step three, I reshape those into a two by two block and another two by two block. And these are kind of those matrices from before. This is my D matrix. This is CB. This is CAB. This is CA squared B. I'm reshaping my four impulse responses into this evolving two by two matrix. And that's kind of an important step that you have to do in uh, actually BPOD or in ERA OKID is really figuring out how, how to manipulate your data into the right structure to do this analysis. Once you do that, honestly, I probably spent 30 minutes or an hour just figuring out the right way to write this one line of code. But once you have that settled down, now what you do is you just run the ERA code. It's that simple. I'm, uh, I'm making this MCO just tells me how big I should make my Henkel matrix. It's literally just how much data I have minus 1 divided by 2, because it's you know a symmetric matrix, so I can only use my matrix can only be half as big as the length of this time series. 
And it's that simple. All I do is um, run this ERA code, and I get an A, B, C, and D matrix that I can build into a system. So I have my ERA system. It's one line of code. You have my ERA code. You can run that one line. Okay? You collect data. You put it in the right form. You run ERA. You have it. Now, I could just plot the response and show you, but I also want to show you what if you didn't have an impulse response? What if it was hard to get this data from an experiment? And instead, maybe some collaborator emailed you like what the output response was to some random input. Okay, so if someone just emails you a data set and it's randomly forced you and the output response to that randomly forced you, you'd have to run it through this second line of code, this OKID code, and this would give you a series of these matrices. That's H is basically these matrices in a certain order. Okay, D, then C, B, C, A, B, C, A squared, B. That's what's in H. Okay, then I basically just plug H directly into ERA and I get my matrix back. Okay, so I hope this is clear. If you can get impulse response data, you can just do ERA in one shot. If you have randomly forced input data, you have to first kind of estimate the impulse response with OKID, then run it through ERA. But in both cases, it's only a few lines of MATLAB code once you have these functions. Okay, um, pretty simple. Let me make sure I actually run everything. This is important. Um, okay, I'm going to run this. Good. We have our data. I'm going to run the ERA model. I've generated an ERA model. I'm going to, um, here I actually have to manufacture this random input output data, but in the real world you'd collect this from your experiment. Uh, warning, simulation starts, whatever. Okay, and I do OKID, okay good. Now we're ready to plot everything. So this is where it gets kind of cool. Ah, perfect. So this is the same system we actually looked at with balanced truncation and balanced POD. And these are the same impulse responses, same model order, r equals 10. The original system actually had 100 states. Uh, and what you can see is that the full model in blue is very well approximated with a 10-mode ERA model. And it's also pretty well approximated with this ERA OKID model. So basically, all of these cases work really, really well. And in this case, it's really interesting. I didn't have access to that model. All I had was data. And I can fit a low order state space model that very accurately reproduces the system response that I can then use for control. So system idea in the context of control, you really care about what's happening. You know, how do I maximally capture what happens given an input on my outputs? And that's what we're seeing here is given an impulse in the inputs, this is the output response. And our low order model, our, our 10 mode model, does a great job of capturing these system dynamics, purely data driven based on some deep and foundational linear algebra, Hankel matrices, Hankel singular value reduction, balanced Gramians. But in practice, very simple to run. These are one or two lines of MATLAB code once you have your data. Okay, So please try this out. Download some data. Generate your own data. See when it breaks down. Try it on nonlinear systems. Um, this is a great tool, but you'll only understand it if you actually start applying it and, uh, and trying it out. Okay, thank you very much.